Hi everyone, Miss Klingen here and we're back for the next part of SEO Trot. Don't forget, it's by Roald Dahl and Quinton Blake. Let's see what happens next. In a couple of minutes, Mr Hoppy was back on the balcony with a sheet of paper in his hand. I'm going to lower it to you on a piece of string, he said, or it might blow away. Here it comes. Mrs Silver caught the paper and held it up in front of her. This is what she read. SEO trot, SEO trot, take regib, take regib. Emok no SEO trot. Walk poo, foop poo, twos poo. Gnurps poo, wolb poo, lose poo. Eggrog, elzug, foots plug. Tup no taff, SEO trot, tup no taff. Take no, take no, Elbog doof. What does it mean? she asked. Is it another language? It's tortoise language, Mr Hoppy said. Tortoises are very backwards creatures, therefore they can only understand words that are written backwards. That's obvious, isn't it? Oh. I suppose so, Mrs Silver said, bewildered. SEO trot is simply tortoise spelled backwards, Mr Hoppy said. Look at it. So it is, Mrs Silver said. The other words are spelled backwards too, Mr Hoppy said. If you turn them around into human language, they simply say, Tortoise, tortoise, get bigger, bigger. Come on, tortoise, grow up, puff up, shoot up, spring up, blow up, swell up. Gorge, guzzle, stuff, gulp. Put on fat, tortoise, put on fat, get on, get on, gobble food. Mrs Silver examined the magic words on the paper more closely. I guess you're right, she said. How clever. But there's an awful lot of poos in it. Are they something special? Poo is a very strong word in any language, Mr Hoppy said, especially with tortoises. Now, what do you have to do, Mrs Silver? is hold Alfie up to your face and whisper these words to him three times a day, morning, noon and night. Let me hear you practice them. Very slowly and stumbling a little over the strange words, Mrs Silver read the whole message out loud in tortoise language. Not bad, Mr Hoppy said, but try to get a little more expression into it when you say it to Alfie. If you do it properly, I'll bet you anything you like that in a few months' time he'll be twice as big as he is now. I'll try it, Mrs Silver said. I'll try anything. Of course I will, but I can't believe it'll work. You wait and see, Mr Hoppy said, smiling at her. Back in his flat, Mr Hoppy was simply quivering all over with excitement. Your slave for life, he kept repeating to himself. What bliss! But there was a lot of work to be done before that happened. The only furniture in Mr Hoppy's small living room was a table and two chairs. These he moved into his bedroom. Then he went out and brought a sheet of thick canvas and spread it over the entire living room floor to protect his carpet. Next, he got out a telephone book and wrote down the address of every pet shop in the city. There were fourteen of them altogether. It took him two days to visit each pet shop and choose his tortoises. He wanted a great many, at least one hundred, perhaps more. And he had to choose them very carefully. To you and me, there is not much difference between one tortoise and another. They differ only in their size and in the colour of their shells. Alfie had a darkish shell, so Mr Hoppy chose only the darker shell tortoises for his great collection. Size, of course, was everything. Mr Hoppy chose all sorts of different sizes, some weighing only slightly more than Alfie's 13 ounces, others a great deal more, but he didn't want any that weighed less. Feed them cabbage leaves, the pet shop owners told him. That's all they'll need, and a bowl of water. When he had finished, 
Mr Hoppy, in his enthusiasm, had bought no less than 140 tortoises and he carried them home in baskets, 10 or 15 at a time. He had to make a lot of trips and he was quite exhausted at the end of it all, but it was worth it. Boy, was it worth it. And what an amazing sight his living room was when they were all in there together. The floor was swarming with tortoises of different sizes, some walking slowly about and exploring, some munching cabbage, cabbage leaves, others drinking water from a big shallow dish. They made just the faintest rustling sound as they moved over the canvas sheet. But that was all. Mr Hoppy had to pick his way carefully on his toes between his moving sea of brown shells whenever he walked across the room. But enough of that. He must get on with the job. I'm going to stop it there because I don't want to give it away yet. Okay? What do you think he's doing with all the tortoises? It said just there at the end, he must get on with the job. What do you think that job is? Hmm, interesting. I'll see you next time to find out just what that job is in the next part of the book. I hope you'll join me. But until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy. And I'll see you all then. Bye. Mm -hmm.